I want to introduce myself. My name is Lance Smith. I'm the president and CEO of Cypher. Cypher is an Austin-based uh, cybersecurity company focused on protecting keys. Uh, we all use encryption, even when we don't know that we are. Uh, just by a show of hands, who is responsible for the keys to your encryption? Anyone? Really? Awesome. We got two in the crowd. Okay. So this is a pretty important point. Um, we are all using encryption. Uh, we, we've got these keys to this encryption that we use to decrypt and encrypt this information. And Cypher is focused on protecting those keys. We believe that through the blackening of, of the key, that won't be exposed in, in any kind of, of data at rest and data in transit. So we've been able to extend the black key into a TLS session, for example, of course, storage uh, data at rest through the storage side as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about our encryption gateway tonight. We're actually going to go into a quick five-minute video demo of the encryption gateway. It's a little bit geeky, uh, and so hopefully this will get the conversation going. And then I'm going to tell you kind of what it is that you just saw and what's included in it, how we did it. So I've also got my colleague, uh, Larry Lozon, who's our uh, VP of Product Development, and Larry is uh, uh, driving the development uh, of this product for one of our large customers. So thank you again. And uh, I also have four kids, but I do not have a sculpture degree. So, <laughs> all right. So go ahead and hit play. Right at the seriousness of, of internal breaches. Uh, last year, over 43% of all breaches were from internal threats. And the combination of controlling the keys as well as encrypting data does give the enterprise that control of the ability for theft of stolen data to not be readable. And so one of our theses is that all player security will be breached, and it's likely going to be breached from the inside. And this particular uh, inspiration made us go back and look at how keys are generated and most keys are generated in a software. Uh, that's where most security and encryption resides today. But there was a condition inside embedded systems used in the military that we began to look at more closely. And in the silicon, there was a one-time programmable master key that we looked at in uh, one particular chipset. And we decided to go, could we expand the use of this hardened, blackened key generation out of the silicon and give it life in the cloud. And can you just use this solution like you're using the current cloud application, where you don't have to buy any hardware, you don't have to worry about the administration levels associated with this encryption technology. And so that's, it's, that's how we extend it. So our customers today, when we look at, let to jump forward real quick, I want to talk about this slide. When our customers looked at what we did, they said, can you extend your technology for an enterprise policy chair and give me a more secure Dropbox? Can you take 200,000 of our cameras that are generating security video feeds and secure those video feeds? Can you take and extend an encryption around the certificate and an endpoint device for an IoT? I mean, these Internet of Things devices are going to outnumber, if they haven't already, the number of people on the planet. Everything's connected. The breaches can come from anywhere. And so what we decided to do, and really the passion that we have at Cyber, was to protect this key, this ID that allows you to decrypt and encrypt. And so the technology we develop basically blackens the key, that one part of the key that's generated in software, it's exposed in plain text, it's in memory. Okay, one might wonder how all this data that's stolen from Anthem or Target is readable by the hacker. Well, they've off, off the stolen keys. And so, what we're doing is we've addressed that problem. But the extension of our black type technology allows us to basically allow all your apps that are in the cloud, whatever access point you have, to go through the encryption gateway to ensure that your encryption policies are under your control, that you're guided, you have a deliberate guided 
introduction of controlling their policies around those fees. And some organizations are sophisticated enough to do that, and some aren't. And so what Cypher does is, through our integration partners, allow companies that are sophisticated to do it themselves, and then we're going to introduce the, the integration partner to it for them to manage it. And so uh, looking at the one file, one key, is a unique attribute as well. And so for a moment, think about how blocks of data are stored in a disk or other volumes in the cloud. Most of those files actually are rooted with a single encryption uh, around the entire block of data. And in Cypher, we actually assign a key per file that goes to the gateway. This has a little bit of a performance impact, but we use certain Cypher suites that are highly performance-based, and ultimately, uh, the exact benefit of the encryption is uh, outweighs some of the performance elements. And so this is a cloud consumable service. Uh, you don't need any additional hardware. And our customers believe that the encryption technology that we've introduced has solved some of the exposures that they have experienced in the past. And so with the US military intelligence uh, kind of guiding us in some directions, the idea of being able to control your own keys has certain policy implications for organizations. So that's something else that, that we're seeing from our customers. Yes. Um, so this is hardware tied in. What the hardware does? So it's a uh, the hardware will fail. Okay. So let's just admit to that. Um, and so what we've been able to do is the one-time programmable master key is actually assigned in a key hierarchy right here that is shared across systems. So there is resilience and replication in, in those systems. Yeah. Great. <laughs> I do. Uh, you can also you can also you can also absolutely lock it down where you know essentially you plan around this data uh, will be valid and it's so secret that I don't want it. I don't want to have anybody. Even if the hardware fails, I'm willing to let that data go away. But you know, so I can do it both ways. Exactly. Uh, yeah, the CPU cycles are going to actually be signing these keys. So we have to develop enough of a cloud-based infrastructure to support the amount of keys that you're going to need. Consuming both at a at a master key level as well as the associated uh, subordinate keys in the hierarchy. And so we selection of processor um, within within a given processor family is is going to make um, you know, the real difference here. What we're doing today, uh, you know, literally is going to generate billions and trillions of keys. When you think about one file, one key kind of concepts. Um, but the, the processing platform says we can do a lot with a you know, very few number of, uh, of CPUs out there today. Um, and you can scale it pretty, pretty effectively. Yes. So, what are the many of the cloud storage providers? Their secret sauce is being able to compress the data. Yeah. Clearly, with this, you're not compressing the data yeah. because that hundred meg file would have been. So, um, they're not going to give you their secret sauce on how to compress the data because that's their business model. Yeah. Um, so, that's, I don't, know, I don't know how that would really work for them, right? I mean, maybe it would be into certain files, but yeah. as a enterprise wide type of solution, so how, how do you kind of back that up? For, from a policy standpoint, I think we have to determine are you encrypting everything? And at that point, uh, what, what's your what's your design point going to look like? And whether it's a homogenous cloud structure with a single provider, a hybrid cloud structure, um, from an EFSS standpoint, um, you know, at a certain point, you have to make those trade offs, right? You have to decide. Okay, I'm going to use the advantages of the cloud. I may have a larger footprint, 
but at least I know that no one can rifle through this stuff. And uh, you know, if they hijack files, then I can be able to read. Right? Now, I may want to set policies around which files I want to encrypt through which ones I don't. Yeah, because I use Dropbox for Enterprise, right? My cost for something like this just went from, Good. you know, very little to something I've yeah. never recorded. Because of the encryption on the back end, or with the compression on the back end, right? Yeah. Uh, so when we look at the cyber encryption gateway, the theory is that you introduce an ability to filter data as it comes in for whatever system to whatever target. And so we've developed an API that integrates to a Dropbox or a Box. We've got um, partners who have the API to, to develop um, the ability for cyber to be integrated into their Internet of Things devices, a piece of cameras or light bulbs or some kind of building management system sensors. And when they have come back and described the performance impact, it's been negligible. Uh, we were not noticing that. This particular customer demo that we just showed you, its intent was to not do any performance enhancements to uh, derive uh, some of the product development and integration. There's some purposeful choices. So, moving just a little bit ahead here in the presentation, we believe that the black tie technology can be extended to other use cases as well. And so that's the benefit of the cyber bringing into the marketplace. Uh, we believe that everything is going to, at some point, be exposed. And so what we want to do is be able to apply certain encryption techniques, but still retain the control of that master key. So when the data is stolen, because it will be, or lost, or taken by an employee, can the enterprise actually keep it, control of that data and access points? And we believe that you can and so that's how we're extending the benefits um, through our enterprise policy and share solution with policy controls as well as the encryption gateway itself with sort of types of cyber suites that you can install, you know, custom cyber suites. Uh, those can be choices that the enterprise can make. There's a lot of configuration choices that uh, you have with this solution. But the blackening of that master key and not exposing it to software ever, never in memory, plain text, is really the pieces that that really inspired cyber. And as an antidote, we did a case study. So how many of you have heard of Heartbleed and, and that internet vulnerability that occurred? So a few years ago, the internet had this vulnerability that was detected. And so what we decided to do is actually a white paper that's on our website at cyber.com. It's actually got a funny spelling, C-Y-P-H-R-E. Um, and cyber, uh, that white paper actually is much more voluminous than, than this chart, but this shows you kind of the internal hack, the external attack, kind of the, the two, uh, the exposure levels, and then introducing the black tie technology. So in, in the controlled study, it, it's obvious that the black tie technology, if introduced before the heart lead vulnerability was in place, the organizations would not have had the vulnerability to expose the data. So that's the takeaway there. And just kind of keeping it short and sweet, I'm happy to go to some additional questions. Yes. Um, in the, the, the architecture that I've uh, I mean, yeah, so I'm assuming there's some kind of registry in your registry that you store mm -hmm. that you're using to maintain the relationship between the different files and the user. How, how, that, you know, how do you maintain that relationship? So essentially, the file key, you see the data file here, and you see the file key. Um, based upon uh, that file being shared amongst users, a new, a new key pair is generated who essentially that, that key represents the union of those users that are authorized to gain access to the file. Right? So it needs to be redone right? when you add or delete user shares from that. Um, that's about the, you know, the one way that you would actually do any kind of uh, data efficiency without any form of compression against the, uh, against the encryption itself, right? If you have, 
if the, the service itself goes down, how yeah. soon possible? Well, so there's redundancy within the service itself. We built it so that um, it, you have failover within the system. Whether that system's sitting in an implementation uh, on a corporate endpoint, whether it's sitting within the cloud and running as a cloud service, there's redundancy built. Yes. Uh, the, the service itself, uh, the service gateways. Um, where is the corresponding key pair for that user, for example, stored? Is it on their local machine or the uh, one that you do the key exchange with? So, policy based, you know, we're going to determine where you're going to make that, that user key pair store, where the authentication is going to. We've kind of left that end open architecturally um, to <coughs> allow for implementations based upon however a customer wants to have it done. Um, we have, if you go up to the site today, you can actually uh, sign up for the EFSS version that's up there if you want to play around with it, we can kind of see how that works done. Yeah. 